So, you know, hearing from all of us and, you know, noticing that some of us having a really, having a really difficult time right now. And uh, I think when we are having a difficult time, you know, either feeling really confused, not really knowing the way to go or feeling like overwhelmed by, by lots of difficulties. I think the most important thing, which I also you know, know <clears throat> when I'm myself in that situation and I'm also in that situation sometimes, what's most important is to you know, be gentle with ourselves, to really be gentle with ourselves and trying to relax into this, uh, you know, into the gripping, you know, into the gripping for finding a foothold, for finding a, a solution, for, you know, finding the place where everything is okay forever kind of a thing. And, you know, relaxing that, that, um, you know, that, yeah, that fear-based reaction and trying to just again and again, you know, when we're noticing it, relaxing into it, you know, letting it, letting it go and then it asserts itself again and letting it go and really coming back into the present moment again and again. However, you know, many times we, we, need to, we need to do this. So being gentle with ourselves and just trying to slow down. You know, just like if we would have like a little child with us, you know, who is, uh, you know, throwing a tantrum, who is fearful, who has, you know, lots of uh, needs, just, you know, we would take that child and hold it close to ourselves or set it on our hip and, and take it with us, you know, as we go through our, the place where we live and we still do our work, we do this, we do that, but we also have the child <clears throat> holding it, you know, and, and giving it the, the closeness it needs, you know, the, the reassurance, you know, I'm here for you. And in this way, you know, we can be here for ourselves as well. And we need to be here for ourselves for these earlier parts, you know, which can get triggered in times of um, challenge in our lives, you know. And, uh, you know, as we are looking into the situation here, you know, on, on our planet with, you know, with what's going on with the poly crisis, what's going on in, in terms of the climate crisis in particular, you know, we can expect that more of those challenges will, you know, be coming towards us. And how important it is, you know, that we are learning skills to take care of ourselves first so that we can also take care and support others. very crucial skills to learn. And, you know, one way what we can do if we feel really agitated is just, you know, having more emphasis on the out-breath. I've just recently, you know, learned a little technique and maybe we can start for a few minutes with that. So, you know, when we are breathing in, counting to four, and then stopping for one, and then breathing out, counting to six. Again, stopping for one, and then breathing in, counting up to four again. Stopping for one, breathing out, counting to six again. So just let's do a few rounds of that.
you know, and also feeling, you know, the, the presence of others in our little Zoom community. You know, knowing that we are not alone and certain element of co-regulation happens, you know, if we are together in this space. You know, hearing how we are doing. And, and slowing down together. So that we might, you know, find ways to get to know it ourselves better, who we really are. We're just not only our thoughts and feelings and emotions, but we are much more than that. We are also, you know, an intricate part of this planet. And because of this, you know, we have access to this uh, vast intelligence also, if we can attune to it. And if we can learn, you know, to practice with the challenging emotions, feelings, thoughts, those patterns, you know, which are hijacking us again and again when we're getting triggered. So today, you know, I like to guide us again in an elements meditation. And, you know, we can start with just feeling our body sitting on the cushion, sitting on the chair, you know, feeling the weight of it. And the weight of the sitting bones, the hardness of the teeth, and the gravity, you know, which pulls us towards planet Earth, of which we are a part of. We are kind of a secretion of the planet. And a constantly changing process. And then we can just, you know, start on the top of the head, you know, being aware of hardness and structure of the bones in the skull bones. And sweeping down over the neck with the vertebrae. The shoulders. the upper arms, the lower arms, the hands, the torso with the rib cage and the spine, pelvis, upper legs, lower legs, the feet. It's earth element. Earth element internally in the bones 
and earth element externally and the rocks and the mountains. It's exactly the same earth element. There's no difference. Earth element is empty, empty of a self. And if we don't, you know, take in earth element via food for like one or two months, the body is going to shut down. It can't ever cut the umbilical cord to the planet. We are it. We are part of the land. These bodies are part of the land. And then, you know, for earth element to hold together and not just be quicksand, we need to also have water element, which stands for wetness and cohesion and fluidity. And we can be aware of it in the fleshy parts of the body, the soft parts, which are, you know, permeated by liquids such as the blood and other bodily liquids. And we again start with the sweeping up from the feet, the softness of the feet, the flesh there. And from the feet, we come to the lower legs. The upper legs. pelvis, the torso with all of the organs in there, the hands, the lower arms, the upper arms, Shoulders, the neck, and the head. This whole body is permeated by water element. can also feel it in the eyes and in the mouth and maybe in the palms of our hands. Water element internally and water element externally in the lakes and the rivers, the oceans, the rains, is exactly the same water element. Water element is empty, empty of a self. And if we don't, you know, taking water elements through drinks and beverages and water, then the body will shut down within about five days, three to five days. Water element is empty, empty of a self. And in order for, you know, water element to function as part of, of a body, it needs to have a certain temperature. If it's too cold, it freezes. If it's too hot, it evaporates. So there's only like a certain temperature range which we can live in. And, you know, we have invented housing, clothing, heating, or different <coughs> strategies, you know, to, to kind of... Um, extend that range where we can live and we can live in so many different areas from the Arctic to the tropics have a great uh, capacity for adaptation. And, you know, fire element comes from, from the sun. 
either you know to, through direct uh, heat from the sun or through fuels, you know, fossil fuels and wood and other elements, you know, which have uh, grown here because of the sunlight and all the other nutrients. So and we can be aware of the fire element, the temperature on our skin, where the skin meets the air in the room or also maybe in our mouth, we can feel the heat. Maybe on the palms of our hands. We're gonna sweep now from the top of the head, sweeping down, noticing fire element. The neck, fire element. The shoulders, fire element. Upper arms, fire element. Lower arms, fire element. Hands, fire element. And then the torso, fire element. Pelvis, fire element. Upper legs, fire element. Lower legs, fire element. And the feet, fire element. This whole body is permeated by fire element. Fire element internally and fire element externally. And it's exactly the same fire element. Fire element is empty, empty of a self. And you know, fire element, the heat of fire element stems from friction, movement, and that brings us to the next element, which is the wind element, which is expansion, contraction movement and we can be aware of it in the breathing process. Breathing in, you know, feeling the expansion, breathing out. Noticing how the chest area contracts. Breathing in the oxygen which we receive from the plant world. We are in constant exchange with the trees. When I look you know, through the window here, I have a beautiful large tree with very shimmering leaves moving in the wind, making a lovely pattern on the wall. We're intimately connected with the plant world through the breathing process. We need each other. And if we don't, you know, breathe for three minutes or so, the body is going to shut down. It's 
into the biosphere. There is no saying, you know, where we are starting and where we are ending in reality. Because the skin itself, you know, is also just like an organ, like many other organs in the body. It's not a real boundary. <clears throat> you can breathe, it cleanses itself, it you know, constantly replenishes itself and loses bits and pieces. So this meditation is about familiarizing ourselves with that which is, you know, escaping our awareness Usually, you know, if we are not really paying attention in this way. You know, noticing how you're feeling now as we are doing this practice. Do you feel different? Do you feel more grounded? Do you feel more connected with something bigger than yourself? What impact does it have on your mood. It's a bit more spaciousness. You know, sensing that deep interconnectedness. And that intelligence, you know, which we can attune ourselves with. It's not, you know, a quick fix. We need to be patient. We need to slow down. And give it time. And that, you know, can feel scary sometimes, you know, because we feel like we need to know now what's going to happen in the future. And I know that for myself, you know, that feeling. And important to not believe in it. Relaxing into it and knowing that is a fearful part, you know, speaking.
and making space for that part of ourselves, but at the same time, and not allowing it to take completely over. That's the, the middle way. then we can also be aware of space element. You know, we are sitting in space. And there's also space inside of the body, how it is, the mouth, the ears, warm, the rib cage. And then the space around us, you know, which doesn't end at the walls of the room, <coughs> but is constantly expanding. We can be aware of space. We can listen into the space, the silence.
So whenever you know the mind grabs onto something, just coming back to listening into the space. And also you know, being aware of the body sitting in space. And also noticing, you know, the quality of the mind. You know, and then you know, connecting with all of other beings who exist with us inside of space on this planet, the uh, plant beings, animals, the biosphere itself. Which has you know, its own self-regulatory intelligence and which is now, you know, talking to us in many ways about coming back into balance. And how we could be, you know, part of that immune system. So getting to know our own bodies, you know, as an intelligent system that carries a lot of information and can experience itself as part of something much bigger than what encapsulates the skin.
you know, from that place of, of grounding, you know, remember why, why did you come, you know, to join us today? Is there already a sense of, you know, an inkling that this is truly a way to go? This is truly a possibility of serving as part of the immune system. You know, and starting with uh, the acknowledgement that we are no longer the center of this much more than human world. You know, relinquishing the you know, idea of mastery, being able to master this, being able to control this. But a different approach of like, uh, opening and allowing the data flow to inform us. And then, you know, all of those fearful responses, they will be kicked up. It's like going against the grain. falling apart you know, of these assumptions and sitting with the confusion and the uncertainty of that, you know, which we don't really know yet what it is, what wants to be born. But there's like a sensing of it, an invitation to it making oneself available. The composting of the old, the hospicing of the old. It's not an easy process. That's why and I'm gonna call, I'm calling it earthworm practice in the Anthropocene, because there is so much darkness, you know, of not knowing. And that is that's scary. You know, as the old falls apart and reveals to us what we need to learn. <clears throat> so, you know, tolerating that dawning of the new, we need, we need friends. We need to do this together. Feeling this, you know, feeling discomfort, uncertainty, you know, at the crossroads, so to say, you know, of the where the new and the old meet and they have a starting a dance, really, which we don't know 
steps yet. But if you don't, you know, stop and look, we're never going to learn it. opening and allowing that stretching process to happen. You know, kicking up all of those parts of ourselves which are still caught in greed, hatred and delusion. And, you know, resourcing ourselves through community and through coming together in this way. You know, leaning into emergence of that innate intelligence of nature, Dhamma. You know, as it represents itself at this point in history, where you know the human species is increasingly entering a serious crisis, <coughs> there. Yeah still not consensus about this, the urgency. But they are increasing, you know, more and more people who are wanting to serve this transition and are already doing it. And that's what brings us together here on these Wednesday meetings. It can be a, a touching point every week, you know, where we are remembering. You know, trusting this is what's happening. This is, you know, what it is to walk the Noble Eightfold Path at this time in history. A complete practice, you know, which can uh, open up for us, and at the same time, we are benefiting others.
Daniel is becoming to the end, also you know, being aware of that which knows about all of this. Awareness itself. Resting at that as that. The knowing. You know, and also coming back to the body again. Feeling the weight on the cushion. Is I, you know, going to ring the bell in a, one or two minutes? <laughs> 